Hi, this is One Cool Thing. We are talking about the iPod's 20th anniversary. I'm Chandra Steele, Senior Features Writer, PCMag.com. This is Sasha Segan. He is our Lead Mobile Analyst, PCMag.com. And he is holding aloft an, an iPod that is probably 20 years old. Or is I mean, that the second just, generation? It's, it's a little younger. Yeah, this is just short of 20 years old. This is the second gen one, which has, it has physical buttons, but the wheel doesn't physically rotate. And uh, so this is the oldest one that we have in PC Mag Labs right now. Uh, but there were so many iPods. It's really crazy how many iPods uh, Apple put out over the, over the course of 20 years. Yeah, and how fast they came out. I was reviewing the timeline and it was really, sometimes it wasn't even a year in between models. It was just like a few short months and then there was another one and different types too. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's probably hard for hard for especially younger viewers to understand how much before it was the iPhone company, Apple was the iPod company. Mm -hmm. And there was this period from especially 2001 through 2007, when Apple was constantly releasing new iPods and a period from really, I think the heyday of the iPod was probably like 03 to 07. And then it was compatible with both uh, Macs and Windows. And uh, you had some of the most popular models come out like this fourth gen here. Um, and just everybody had an iPod. Um, right. It was, yeah, it was how you listen to music. Exactly. Well, it started, I mean, there were other MP3 players at first and they were ungainly and hideous. You have one there and you can see why Apple was like, oh, we can definitely do better than that. You know, and it, they were they were clunky to use. They were clunky to look at. And Apple came along and just I think it took like 90 percent of the market share within a short amount of time, just releasing these devices that made it easy to put your music onto something. And as Steve Jobs said, a thousand songs in your pocket with the first one, which sounded like so much at first. And then it quickly became not nearly enough room on an iPod. Yeah, what Apple's breakthrough was, was uh, basically cornering the market initially in tiny hard drives. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the MP3 players available before the first iPod came out were significantly larger. They looked like uh, portable CD players. And uh, that and held was only about as much. Some of them really held like one album's worth of music. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was because uh, they were not using the tiny high capacity uh, 2.5 inch hard drives that, uh, or maybe it's even smaller, were they 1.5 inch hard drives? In any case, the tiny high capacity hard drives that went into these devices. And even after other manufacturers started uh, adopting these hard drives, Apple's ease of use and Apple's cultural cachet really caused Apple to lead the market. And then once it had uh, really dominated that hard drive market, it then came out with some of the first flash-based right. uh, music players in the Shuffle series. And now, of course, basically everything's based on flash. It is. They had so many flash-based ones. I think the Mini was maybe one of the flash, first flash ones. Well, the Minis, no, the Minis started with tiny hard drives. What happened was mm -hmm. uh, they had, so they had the first couple of generations of the iPods, um, and then they introduced the iPod mini as a smaller, cuter, and especially lower cost iPod, but it still had a hard drive. After two generations of the mini, um, they had figured out flash and they went to the nano. And the nanos were defined by using flash. And then you had nanos and shuffles in the market running on flash and iPods such as this fourth gen and then this fifth gen um, running on hard drives. And then I feel like there was a period in the middle, like just after the iPhone came out, where the iPod line kind of lost its way and like they were trying to play games on the shuffle. And it, yeah. It got to be a lot. I think they had, um, they added that like Nike fitness capability. It just started doing what phones now do. I mean, it just expanded so much. There were sort of proto apps, I would say on some of those models and they really did get away from that like Apple music beginning that they had. And I kind of wish that they would go back to honestly, you know, my phone is so distracting. The more I think about this iPod anniversary, the more I think I would like a dedicated music player. I mean, what's Spotify doing? They should really do something. <laughs> we like Swedish design. They have the software. 
become the new Apple Music. I know. I mean, where the iPod is now is, of course, this is the seventh gen iPod Touch. Like and yeah, it's, it's an iPhone without a phone. Um, that's what they're selling now is iPhones without phones. And some of it is because music right now is in apps. Music mm -hmm. is by and large streaming with, with, with this one, you had to, you were ripping songs off of CDs to the MP3 format or downloading them through Napster or LimeWire and then syncing them through a cable to this device and everything was local. Huh. Um, and, and that was still better than what was happening. Before yeah, that. It was better than what we had before. It was faster. Apple was and, a lot faster at that. Yeah, especially because of that that high speed firewire interface, mm -hmm. as opposed to USB two, which was what we we had at the time. And then these guys, of course, can they can run all of these music apps that people mm -hmm. run now. But I agree with you; they kind of run too many apps. Like they there's, do. they're distracting. They get away from that like basic functionality. I mean, Apple had really distilled it in terms of those like shuffles where you could not even see what music was on there, but you were still like, this is a great device. I don't mind this at all. Yeah, I did this March Madness style bracket of 32 different uh, iPod models because there were more than 32 different iPod models. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first shuffle came out really high on my list because it was so simple. First of all, it was the only iPod ever to have a built-in actual USB port. That was, I think, its huge selling point. It was yes. so easy to use. It was so easy. You could just stick it into your computer. iTunes would automatically load it with music. You mm -hmm. were good to go. My number it had a one, lanyard you could wear. It was very portable. Unlike the third gen shuffle, there were still controls on the shuffle so that you could mm -hmm. fast forward and rewind at least. Um, my absolute favorite, the top iPod, of course, was the iPod Classic, which was the last of the music-only iPods and sort of the, the, the epitome of the iPod experience. But as I, was, as I was researching this, I kept discovering some of the really weird iPods. Like, had you heard about the Harry Potter iPod? You know, I had completely forgotten about it until I was reviewing this, and then you reminded me of the Harry Potter iPod which barely had branding. It had this, it looked like an iPod. And then on the back, there was just this like etching about of Hogwarts. And I guess it came with some audiobook functionality or audiobook downloads on it. So you could only buy it with the complete Harry Potter series on audiobook. Because that was why you wanted an iPod. I guess for some people, that was why they wanted the iPod. I did find that I had forgotten about that you could pay for $50 extra there was an iPod model where you could have either Madonna's signature, Tony Hawk's, Beck's, or the No Doubt logo engraved on the back. I wonder how many of those they actually sold. Yeah, I mean, it, there were there were a bunch of these sort of experimental weird partnership iPods very much in that early 2000s period before Apple was a megacorp. You know, back in that time, like once more, it's almost hard to hard, hard to understand now. But back in that time, Apple was very much an underdog. They were mm -hmm. barely profitable. Um, and they were experimenting with things like the worst iPod ever, the HP iPod. I was about to say <laughs> the weirdest, weirdest iPod to me is the HP iPod. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about that one? Because I still, I don't, I can't, I, I feel like it was a fever dream that it existed. And even now, it's just such a weird concept to think about. Yeah, so the HP iPod was about, back in 2003, um, Apple didn't have a giant network of stores. Um, Apple didn't have a, you know, Apple wasn't selling one of the world's most uh, popular smartphones. Um, Apple, was this, Apple was this little computer company just coming out of the doldrums. And HP was huge. HP was this massive PC company with PCs in every home and office and a gigantic dealer network. And so Apple thought, uh, well, we could partner with HP and that would get a lot of other iPods out there. Oh, and uh, HP could handle the service and support. Um, and this was a complete disaster. Nobody wanted an iPod supported by HP. No. And HP was really trying at that time, I feel like, to get a lot of more cultural cachet. They had like partnerships with things like Project Runway, and then they had this Apple partnership. 
And I think they thought it was their chance to be hipper and cooler. And it didn't work out for anybody really, but I do wish I could see one of those old HP iPods. I really, I know somebody out there must have them or maybe on eBay, who knows, they're probably going for a fortune right now. Yeah. And what's funny is that it is the same fourth gen iPod mm-hmm. as, you know, it's pretty, it's this iPod. It, is. it just it's has like a weird thing. skin around it. Yeah. And, I, and obviously, and you couldn't go to Apple to get it repaired. I think that was the weirdest part. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and, and and part of the iPod experience, I think really, especially once you got to, you know, these generations mm-hmm. was the experience of knowing that you could go to the Apple store, knowing you could go to the Genius Bar, knowing that you would be taken care of a little if you had iPod issues. Yeah. So which iPods did you personally have? So uh, the one that is closest to my heart is the third gen. Mm-hmm. And uh, the third gen had uh, four. It, it looked a lot like th- it looked a lot like this one, but it had four buttons up here as opposed to having these buttons on the click wheel. And initially, I used the fir- third gen as my music player, but for years and years and years, it was uh, the bedtime music in my kid's room in a dock, and to the point where my child like could not go to sleep. Uh, at night without, without the yeah, without the iPod on the appropriate playlist. And so it just became, it was so critically important to our lives. And then <laughs> after, so yeah, after this third gen, um, we had a fifth gen, um, which we were just using. That was my, you know, traveling music player. Mm-hmm. Um, we also had a, uh, we had a, a, a first or second gen mini and a couple of shuffles. Yeah, I think my first one was the mini. I think it might've been a second generation mini. It's hard to tell, but first and second generation looks exactly alike. It was that yeah. silver, like anodized aluminum sort of one. I probably only had that one for a couple of years until I moved on to that adorable squat iPod Nano. It was like the squarish one that had video. Oh, that is the iPod Nano I hate the most. Oh, really? I think it's the cutest iPod Nano there is. It's very like squishy and appealing looking. (laughs) What do you hate about it? I think it looks like deformed. It has a good screen size. It at least has like a more proper ratio than those other Nanos that have those like weird vertical screens that you can turn on the side. It's a two inch screen and they're trying to show video Mm -hmm. on it. Oh, I remember I watched, I think, all of the uh, Darjeeling Limited on it. I mean, I saw it in the theater and then I was like, let me download this movie to this and attempt to watch it. It was fine. <laughs> At the time, it seemed fine. <laughs> but it was a, just a very cute, cute one. And then I had those later shuffles um, that were the clip on ones, like one of the last ones, not the one that was a little elongated, like the very square little clip on ones. Those were very good for like the gym. They just clip it on you and go. Yeah, I think that was was that the was that the shuffle four. I think that was the shuffle four. four. It was it was yeah. just a clip. It was like the absolute most basic tiny music player possible. Well, wasn't that weird one that was like just a tiny, tiny, tiny rectangular clip with absolutely nothing on it that was voice controlled? Yeah, the shuffle with no controls and the then shuffle the with no control, like the proto Siri maybe. I was like, this is when they're like, I guess we'll try this. I don't know how that one did. It was like, it was out of there in no time. I never saw it in the wild. I never saw people really use that one. Yeah, it came between. So the shuffle two was clip style and the shuffle four was clip style. You could definitely see like they were experimenting with this voice control concept. And then Mm -hmm. they were like, no, no, no. The world is not ready for this. We're, we're, We're going back to what we're going back to what we know people like. Well, it came later. I mean, listen, that might have been their first uh, their first foray into Siri. And then actually there was a Nano that clipped, like a very square looking Nano that was kind of like a big shuffle with a full touch interface. Yeah, that it. was the that was the Nano 6. Mm-hmm. And that was like it it you could you could run it was when the Nanos were running proto apps. Yeah. And it was like the most ridiculously tiny thing you could run apps on. And people were wearing it as a watch. You could buy um, bands for them. Yeah, it was the pre-Apple Watch, Apple Watch. It was a pre-Apple Watch, Apple Watch. I had people totally like, forgotten about that. Yeah, and it was it was a perfect size for it. And it had good battery life, probably better than the Apple Watch has now. I think it was like 24-hour battery life. Because it so. didn't have to worry about all that connectivity. That's really what yeah. I think kills a lot of the battery life in current devices. Yeah. 
So, okay. So, um, yeah, if, if, if Apple was to bring back, uh, if Apple was to bring back the iPod now, like the real iPod, mm -hmm. what would you want it to do? I think I would just want it to have those basic functions. I just want it to play music, you know, where I can control it and see it. I would say like at least a, a small sort of screen on it, something like that, but obviously tinier. And I mean, ideally I would want it to connect to a streaming music service. iTunes had become so horrible as the years went on, started out as such a great interface compared to others. And then now it's evolved into this like Apple music thing, which is a mess really. Um, I just, I, I don't use it. I removed the app from my phone. I just went full streaming with Spotify. Yeah, I would say stream and cash mm -hmm. is what I would want an iPod yes. to do. I would want it to have Wi-Fi, but not cellular. Mm -hmm. And um, just be able to, at home, stream music from, you know, maybe select one of half a dozen music services and then have it uh, cache playlists, you know, cache 10 or 20 gigabytes worth of playlists on itself for when you're out. And I think that that would still find a market even 20 years after, uh, even even 20 years after the iPod, even now that I we're in the so. era of phones. Yeah, but I think Apple's like partnership days are behind it. It just wants you know, its own proprietary things. But ideally you would have an Apple device that had, like you said, other streaming services on it. So I think it is up to other places now to innovate on their own. I really don't know why Spotify hasn't capitalized on, on their popularity and like gone with some hardware, expanded their market a little. But yeah, I, I was hoping that on the 20th anniversary, we had that Apple announcement the other day. I was like, and they said Apple Music. I was like, this is it. They're gonna bring back some sort of iPod. Yeah, instead they announced a uh, service plan, apparently, where you can only ask for songs via Siri, which sounds like a great way to get people to upgrade past that service plan. Yeah, with some very bad playlists. But it's like the Shuffle 3! It is, but worse, I would say. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's still the market for it. I think people are so distracted by their devices that they want something that just, just does music. Yeah. Yeah, so and Apple is still selling an iPod. You can still buy a seventh generation iPod Touch that's out there. But it it's but it's exceedingly expensive. For I think 256 gigs, it's almost four hundred dollars. Wait, you're talking about this guy? Y yes. Yeah. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that there is a guy out there who has been refreshing and upgrading old iPod classics. And now these are basically made by hand, so they're very expensive. But he's put a terabyte into an iPod Classic. I think he just put Bluetooth into an iPod Classic. And so the iPod Classic can live on. But yeah, uh, 20 years later, um, I would love to see the 20th anniversary iPod uh, really living up to the, the, the iPod uh, the iPod attitude and the iPod purpose. Uh, okay. But yeah, so we've got some stories up on PC Mag right now, right? We do. We have a lot of stories that are going up about the 20th anniversary. One of them includes um, PC Mag staffers thinking about their first iPods, reflecting on them. And we've included Spotify playlists of at least guesstimates of the songs they had. Some people had their exact playlist, like their top 10, but some people guessed at the music they liked and say 2004, 2005. When, when they got their first iPod. So that's probably my favorite story that's going up. Was no names, but was anyone emo? Um, no, nobody was emo, <laughs> but some people did have like, oh, I listened to a lot of audio books. And I was like, this is the most boring Spotify playlist. <laughs> but obviously you'll see who it is when it goes up. And they, they know I made fun of them for it, but <laughs> okay, yeah, there were great. some good ones. Yeah, and uh, I, have a, I have a story going up where I ranked every iPod um, of 32 different iPod models in order from 32 to number one. I would love if uh, the viewers here could take a look at that and uh, vigorously disagree with me in the comments. Yeah, I think I might go in there and disagree with you in the comments too. I'm gonna argue for my squat iPod Nano. Excellent, okay, so uh, I guess I'm gonna go now, put my Bluetooth headphones on and listen to music on my phone. Sounds good, I'm gonna play music on my phone too on Spotify. <laughs> See you later. See ya.